Hi, I'm Carlton from the Pharmacy Seeds Network. Uh, just want to talk about the greenhouse a little bit today. Uh, I know a lot of the people who have followed me from the start have seen all these different pieces evolve, uh, but I realized the other day uh, through a couple of questions and some of the comments that a lot of people who hadn't been following along kind of didn't have all the pieces of the picture together. So uh, I'm going to make a video like this right now to get you up to date where we're at now. And I'll try and do this every six months or a year in the future and, uh, you know, just kind of help people catch up as to where things are at. So uh, I'm going to go into uh, everything that this greenhouse encompasses thus far. Uh, knowing me, I probably won't be able to stop myself from mentioning potential future plans on some of those pieces. Uh, anyway, we're going to go into that now. All right, so number one, this greenhouse is built in 2014. Um, I've been wanting to build a greenhouse for 20 years, maybe more, very long time, most of my life, since I, since I realized how much I loved plants. Um, so this greenhouse was built uh, with pretty much no money. Um, a friend of mine helped me buy the plastic to put over the covering. Uh, I had a bunch of old screws and uh, pieces, parts laying around. And so I built it from scratch and I actually harvested the timber from here on this property. Uh, it was out back, it was some thinning that I was doing to help uh, help uh, keep the forest balanced in a particular area. And uh, so I just took the stuff that I thinned and brought it up here and cut it to dimensions and notched it and, and went through all the work. I'll dig, a, dig up a couple of pictures from the build and I'll throw them in somewhere here. Okay, and so now that you've looked at some of the pictures from the build, you realize that there's some weird hole in the ground, and what is that? Well, that hole in the ground was a plan for an in-ground furnace that I'd wanted to play with for a long time. Uh, I figured while well, I was building the greenhouse and I had the materials, why not try it? So I built it. It's built out of some very thin uh, metal. Uh, it was not built to last a long period of time. It was really just uh, let's build something like this, test it, and see if it works. It does work. It works pretty well. Uh, it gave me a lot of fantastic data as far as feedback on how to improve that on the next design. Um, and it worked for, uh, I think it went for two full seasons. It might have been one. But um, anyway, it was an in-ground furnace with the principle of heating the soil and heating the soil under the greenhouse and using the thermal mass of the soil under the greenhouse to heat the greenhouse. And it worked. It got me through at least one season, possibly two. I don't really recall uh, the details of that um, but anyway uh, as the furnace broke down as I knew it would uh, because it was constructed of thin metal and adobe uh, if I were to do that better in the future I would of course construct it using concrete and heavy gauge steel and probably fire bricking and probably uh, furnace cement as well for certain targeted parts of the design um, I would also probably incorporate a water jacket in that so water or air or both could be pumped from it and used to heat the greenhouse in a more effective fashion, more efficient fashion. Um, anyway, that said, that worked. Um, the greenhouse went up for very cheap. Uh, I only had one layer of plastic on it initially. Uh, I, that worked fine. It wasn't great, but it was fine. Uh, in 2016, of February of 2016, I think, I added the second layer of plastic. That made a big difference in heating um, and keeping the place warm. Obviously, that layer of air insulation helps. Um, some of the supports that I had to use to do that um, have broken down and so uh, in some places we don't have double layer but whatever I'm not too worried about it uh, this furnace is more than capable of heating it so uh, we went from the old furnace to the stove that you see here uh, I put this in here with a couple of tanks next to it I'll see if I can dig a picture of that up and throw it in here And so after that, uh, I started 
uh, playing around with the thermal mass idea. I had some rock and some water in the form of tanks next to it. They were just passively, passively, passively <laughs> absorbing the heat from it and, uh, and then releasing that heat back over time on the overnight. After the furnace would go out, the water would release the heat. I began playing with that thermal mass concept more and learning how to do that. I did add a convective heating loop that basically used the, the heat from the stove to do the pumping from one of the tanks through the convective coil and back to the tank. That worked fairly effectively. Um, it was kind of a compromised design just because of the parameters I had to work within on it. Uh, if I were to go out and design something like that, I could make it far more effective. And I actually have a project like that coming up in the future. See, I told you I couldn't keep from telling you about future projects. Uh, this thermal mass tank here is 275 gallons. This is one of two thermal masses in the greenhouse now uh, with a much higher efficiency rating. I should see my video on thermal siphon stuff. I will try to put a link in the description for that so you can check that out. Um, anyway, so I added the, uh, the stainless steel stock pot. I had this left over from uh, many years back on the other farm that I had. Uh, we were doing uh, large batches of spaghetti sauce and salsa. Yeah, 40 gallons at a clip. Uh, that was a lot of fun. We made some excellent sauces and salsas and uh, a lot was learned about that process as well. But so, uh, so since this is not in use on that scale of production right now, uh, it's being used as a thermal mass. Like I said, it's about 40 gallons. It's full of water, and that water is being monitored by a computer called the Raspberry Pi. And that water's temperature, if you look at the H average, there's two sensors in that tank. It's about 135 degrees right now. So, uh, so that thermal mass has a coil inside. See if I can, yeah, I'll take a snapshot of another video and show you the coil inside. Uh, anyway, there's a copper coil about 50 feet long. It's a it's called a work coil. It's usually used for chilling beer after you've done your brewing uh, before you pitch your yeast and go into fermentation. Um, but in this case, it's being used as a heat transfer coil because it was an easy thing to do. It's connected to these two hoses. One is an out, one is an in. Uh, the one hose has a small pump, which I think I can zoom you into. Yeah, real small DC 12 volt pump draws about 8 watts and uh, that pump has an intake suction down near the bottom of the tank so we're pulling, pulling the coldest water from the bottom and that green line returns back near the top of the tank so we're returning the hottest water near the top and taking advantage of the stratification process where hotter water rises and settles and colder water settles and, fall and settles so to speak. Um, anyway, so this tank is capable of storing about 275,000 BTUs, max if I could pack it in there. Uh, lately it's only been holding between 50 and 75,000, which isn't bad. That gets me through the overnights and keeps temperatures relatively stable in here. I'll uh, try and throw a chart up maybe here. Okay, so that moves you in through the thermal mass stuff, the original furnace design, the new furnace design, how the thermal mass system works. And uh, so now what we'll do is we'll go into the Raspberry Pi system. Uh, my friend Aaron turned me on to the Raspberry Pis in late 2015, and by February of 2016, uh, he had given me a Raspberry Pi and a couple of DSB-18 B20 Dallas Instruments one wire temperature sensors uh, and he taught me how to write some of the code for that and uh, so I've been playing with logging data into a database with that uh, since 2016 it has evolved there's about 25 or 30 sensors in the greenhouse everything from east and west low this is a sensor right here this is another 
to stove sensors to stove output pipe sensors to thermal mass sensors both thermal masses east and west peak etc etc in other words it's evolved and evolved and evolved I finally did put the pie in a box uh, this is what a Raspberry Pi looks like and actually you're not looking at the board itself you're actually looking at this is an add-on board called a Pi Easy Connect for uh, bringing all in the 40 pin header that's normally on a Pi that's this right here uh, bringing those all in uh, easily with screw terminals so you can hook wires up and unhook them easily um, that board underneath it is the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. That is the latest revision of the Raspberry Pi. Uh, I'll throw a link to that on here somewhere and you'll see it's a pretty snappy processor with a pretty good amount of RAM. They're an ARM-based processor. We run a, uh, a software, we run an operating system called, uh, that's a Linux operating system. Uh, the old one was Jesse. The new one is Raspbian Stretch. Um, anyway, so that actually does all the temperature logging that logs to a database and is connected through an ethernet cable uh, to my router and so I can download that data I can watch it on charts I can do all sorts of cool stuff with it uh, now last spring I finally got the pieces together to wire up the relay board to that Pi and so now we're controlling uh, all sorts of stuff in here uh, number one the transfer between the big thermal mass over there and the, big, the smaller thermal mass on the stove, when this reaches a certain set temperature, that heat pump there, that pump comes on and starts transferring heat from this tank to that tank. If we let this tank temperature go too low on this, it'll actually take enough energy and heat off the fire to cool the fire and slow the fire down. So there's a balance you gotta maintain there. All right, it also runs uh, a couple of fans here up top, uh, one there and one there. Those fans, obviously, with the stove on one end of the greenhouse, this end will be warmer than that end. So in the wintertime, when there's a real high, uh, real high delta between inside and outside temperature, this east end of the greenhouse gets much cooler, much faster. And so to compensate for that, those fans come on when the tef temperature difference is greater than 8 degrees between east and west, and they kick back off again when it's less than 5. So it runs those, and then of course in the spring and summer, when things start to get hot out, you have to be able to dump off heat real fast. And so that's what these vents here are. Uh, there's a vent in the ceiling, and a vent in the back, fairly low. I wish I could have got it lower, but it just didn't work structurally for that um, but uh, so uh, number one when it gets above a certain temperature outside and above a certain temperature inside this one opens uh, if the temperature continues to climb then it'll open this vent and let cool air in and so through controlling simple vents we're able to allow for a complete passive cooling enough to run active fans and burn energy in order to cool the greenhouse during those uh, seasonal shifts like spring and fall so it runs all of those pieces, and there are many more to come, and many more sensors to add. Um, but right now, that's the basics of how all this stuff works. Of course, uh, no Raspberry Pi greenhouse controller system would be complete without being powered by solar. So we added that also. Um, so there's one 100 watt solar panel up there. This is the charge controller. <coughs> um, it's a 12 volt system, goes to a 35 amp hour, 12 volt battery right now. Uh, there's a breaker on here to prevent any major short circuits. And a uh, fuse distribution block, of course, to make sure that things are safe. And then uh, there's two different meters. Uh, one monitors power produced by the panel, and one monitors power being used, and all that sort of stuff. So we can actually see how much power the panel has produced versus how much power the system has used. <clears throat> gives us a good idea of where we're really at uh, power wise um, I think that pretty much covers everything for the basics I guess one other thing I should mention uh, the greenhouse does have water currently that's only seasonally because uh, I don't have buried water line So in the winter time, the water line freezes up. That water is supplied by a ram pump. If you don't know what a ram pump is, check out my videos on ram pumps. Um, I'll try and throw a clip of the ram pump in here. In the fall season, 
Very nice to have fresh spring water being delivered up top again. And so anyway, that ramp pump supplies water for the greenhouse and actually for the entire farm. Uh, it's a gravity powered pump effectively. It runs off falling water and pumps a portion of that falling water up to uh, at least 10, it'll do up to at least 10 times the fall. Okay, so if it's falling six feet, it'll do up to 60 feet. And actually I found you can do better than that because we're getting about six foot of fall out of the spring down at the pond and we're pumping over 72 vertical feet to our tank and we're still moving about a gallon a minute doing that. Um, so that goes to a reservoir tank and then that makes it so we can turn on the water and get five or ten or fifteen gallons a minute if we want on demand. So uh, that's pretty much uh, the basics about how the greenhouse works and uh, I think that carries you everything from when the greenhouse was originally built up until now. I hope you found this video interesting uh, or informative. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please do so down below. Don't be afraid to like or subscribe. And thanks for watching the Pharmacy Seeds Network. The Pharmacy Seeds Network YouTube channel is here to provide educational materials related to farming and gardening. Our primary focus is to educate farmers, gardeners, homesteaders, preppers, and other self-reliant people to grow better food through organic methods, but at a higher standard. Our focus is on hybrids farming, using combinations of trace minerals, rock dusts, foliar feeds, essential oils, balanced soils, and appropriate biology to facilitate truly healthy plants that are both pest and disease resistant, as well as far more productive. In amongst this main goal, we intend to include many technical details for layout, heating, cooling, water pumping, and too many other farm-related operations to list. Through education, we can make our farmers and gardeners more self-reliant, close fertility loops, reduce pesticide usage, increase productivity, and preserve ecology for future generations, which fortifies our food system as well as our sovereignty. Ultimately, all this comes back together to make healthier, happier people with the same effect echoing down through communities and ultimately around the planet. To that end, if you believe in our cause and wish to support us, it is greatly appreciated. Any amount you give helps. Hi, I'm Carlton from the Pharmacy Seeds Network. So now that you know what the channel is about, let me tell you a little bit about Patreon. Patreon is an easy way for you to support my channel and the projects that I'm working on. A lot of these projects, people give me most of the pieces parts, and I scrounge pieces parts in the woods, and I cut my own trees and lumber and timber, but sometimes I can't source those parts. Sometimes I have to pay out of pocket for those parts, and uh, I don't always have the money to do that. So uh, your Patreon help can help with that and other projects. Uh, as a Patreon subscriber, um, as time goes on, I will start releasing videos on Patreon first and then eventually onto YouTube, so you'll get to be part of the, uh, the first release of videos. And uh, when we reach 200 patrons, we're going to put a website up and uh, you know we'll put all sorts of extra videos, documentation, and uh, all sorts of other information. We'll make that available to our Patreon supporters. Um, and if you wanted to become a first tier provider, you could get your name in the credits on the YouTube videos if you're interested in that. Um, I hope you find our channel interesting and intriguing. I hope you'll support us on Patreon if you can. If you can't, I hope you'll just enjoy the channel and spread it and share it with others and spread and share that knowledge and information. That's really the goal. Thanks for watching, and I hope you'll support the Pharmacy Seeds Network on Patreon.